Warhammer Total War 3 is the perfect Viking life simulator. You can raid distant shores, meet fellow Viking minded individuals, and best of all, you get to play as a smoking hot redhead. Welcome to Norska, the faction that is so rarely updated that the Lord Selection screen video is about as pixelated as a gas station security camera. So come along with me on this Viking adventure as we explore Warhammer Norway, uniting tribe after tribe to our cause to achieve our ultimate goal defeating the Emperor. France. But first, we had to deal with our angry neighbor, a weak, pathetic warlord by the name of Snagger the Terror, named so because he once got caught crying at the end of Titanic. So we sent in our glorious Viking army, expertly set up an ambush with our cavalry, and then all hell broke loose. Swords clashing with shields! Axes clashing with flesh, and Wurfric's pet mammoth Bojangles clashing into absolutely everything. The new fallen Norska snow was painted red by the fiery redhead that day, and many songs will be sung about the glorious victory achieved, uh, mostly because we had mammoths, and they did it. And with the battle over, we had our first decision to make. Kill Snagger the Tearer for his cowardice or confederate with him and have his tribe assimilate into ours. With the winter of Norska being harsh, and our enemies beyond the north numerous, we ended up doing the Viking version of a business merger. Let's see Snagger's card. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. But just like capitalism requires endless expansion, so do we. Our armies march towards the wretched tribe of the Nagelfarlings. It was once more time to fight. The army of the Nagelfarlings was a lot bigger than what we had faced before. So we set up another expert cavalry ambush. But this time, we had another trick up our winter coat sleeve. A whole puppy mill of canine warriors, the goodest of boys, putting the kill in kill shelter. Wurfik literally just adopted every stray dog in his neighborhood and conscripted them for battle. The battle then started with us tactically rushing all of our troops against their defensive line, followed by Wurfik using his special powers. <laughs> then it was time to finally answer the age old question Who doth let the dying dog is out? Was me! And they promptly got stuck in with the enemy infantry and played fetch with their heads. The rest of the battle went about as one can expect from Norska on Norska violence. Skulls got crushed, shields got splintered, and Bojangles the Mammoth had a mental breakdown from the high expectations set upon him. In the end, we were victorious, and the Nagelfarlings were assimilated into our tribes. With two tribes down, it was time for our last conquest before I start feeling comfortable with launching raids down south. We're talking about conquering none other than the wind-whipped, sea-pickled plunderers, the Scalings. And as luck would have it, Urmgard Hargrotson was standing outside of the city, waving his axe in the wind like no one was watching. But we were watching, alright. We saw what you did with that axe. But by this point, you know the drill. In our forces went. And our four-legged lunatics and brand spanking new war chariots made short work of their defenses. But the most unprepared defender of them all was none other than Urmgard Hargrotson, who spent too much time playing Genshin Impact last night and completely overslept, thus missing the battle. In short, we came, we saw, we came again, and we conquered. But alas! We had unknowingly committed the biggest of Viking sins. We had attacked another faction while their leader was out at sea raiding the southerners. A shameful mistake. Or was it? With legendary Viking leader, Ferman Ingerson from the Djupaste Skogarna i Värmland, stuck at sea in his longboat, we were easily able to mop up the rest of his holdings, leaving him with nothing to do but make cringy Viking themed TikToks wearing his mother's eyeshadow and clutching that printed out 23andMe genetical heritage result that proves that he is indeed 3% Scandinavian. But suddenly, out of nowhere, Surta Ek, the trickster of the North and North, seeks to avenge the blood debt that I have incurred by cucking Fjellman Ingerson out of his boathouse. And thus, 
Our factions are at war. A swift surprise attack ensures that the garrison of Doomkeep is, well, fittingly, doom. So defend the settlement we did. If they were the balloons coming for us, we would be the monkeys with the darts. The Skalds will sing for eons about the brave defenders of Doomkeep. And even though the odds look pretty terrible in the beginning, what happened next will shock you. If you're very stupid. Because yes, we did all eventually die like dogs and was left to freeze out in the snow like blood splattered popsicles. But before that, the brave defenders of Doomkeep managed to hold for surprisingly long. And even managed to take out none other than Suta Ek himself. A loss, sure, but a victory. But mostly just a loss. But that's not a problem, just a small setback. We brought in Wulfric with his massive host and seized back what we lost. And now, the blood debt is theirs to pay! With Surta Ek defeated, Vigo Skulltaker, taker of skulls, pathetically tried to set up an ambush for us. But it's given away by a comically loud reverbed fart that echoes out over the snow covered valley. So the only one getting ambushed is them. And right away, we're faced with the biggest plot twist since that time when you found out that your father didn't actually leave to buy milk. Suka Ik is alive! But not for long, as we send in a glorious horde of Vikings, including Bojangles the Mammoth, that we've overdosed with Adderall. And in the greatest redemption arc since Boromir and Lord of the Rings, it's Snugger the Terror! coming to save us with his glorious reinforcements. Burfric, together with the Crybaby, managed to utterly stomp the Varg armies into the snow, and with our war dogs chasing Sutta himself off the map, we end this blood feud by assimilating him and his fellow tribesmen into our great heathen army. And thus ends the Norskan Civil War. The tribe is united under one wanderer. And now with our forces gathered, it was time to do what the Vikings do best. To sail for distant shores and plunder the gold of the southerners! Our great leader Wulfric, however, he had hit the Meadhorn a bit too hard that night and ended up crashing his longboat into a bloated sea carcass full of treasure. But it seems we didn't crash here first. Pirates! These lost souls are truly lost in the Great White North. And if that wasn't bad enough, they're being led by none other than Henrietta the Creeper! Oh man! After remembering the pirate call, Wulfric called for a parley, and the pirates were kind enough to land their forces on the shore to avoid any damage to our boats. That was their first mistake. This allowed us to deploy our war dogs against their salty sea dogs, to easily destroy the ship cannons that some poor poop deck swabber had to haul all the way from their boats to the battlefield. But then, the pirates seemingly took a note out of the ATF handbook and promptly shot my dogs. Not cool. Chaos ensued, spells were cast, and Bojangles the recovering Adderall Addict Mammoth was deployed to pacify the battlefield. Wulfric himself also showed up with his brand new whip. Battle was won, gold was seized, and the pirates were neutralized. Now with free reign to plunder the coast as we saw fit, that's exactly what we started doing. And first on the list, the Empire. Our forces quickly laid siege to the city of Salzenwood, preventing their army, led by Bruno Becker the Bathroom Breaker, from coming to the aid of Diederschaffen, where we deployed our latest weapon of mass destruction. That's right, we have weaponized the GIF. We have sent in the Goshtorn Manwurf Regiment to show these Empire dogs that will not use bark with a whole lot of bite. We have yet to confirm the rumors that these soldiers are just normal Norska degenerates in insanely expensive fursuits. But all of that raiding money is bound to go somewhere, and it's not like our Viking warband is offering a 401k matching. Money well spent, I say, money well spent. But the militarization of a fursona is bound to upset someone, and that someone was Emperor Karl Franz, who promptly declared war on us, stating in an official Twitter post, Leave the furry fandom out of this, you Dawnheim listening incense. So as a response, we sacked Salzenwood. We then ravaged our way into the Empire lands, laying siege to three of their towns at once. Krudenwald was the first to fall, in a glorious head-on collision, where the stinky Empire peasants got to meet the Shad, fish-eating Norsked raiders. We burned the settlement in the name of the Hound, because goddammit, we're sticking to this furry theme. But then, it happened. The goddamn Emperor himself, Karl Franz, 
showed up to gloriously defend his homeland against us Northmen invaders. His army was big and mighty, but so was ours. It was now or never, and let me tell you, it was one hell of a battle. The battle started with Snugger and Tyrer engaging the Emperor's forces head on, giving Wulfric, our glorious leader, just enough time to pull off a masterful hammer and anvil maneuver, smashing into the enemy forces from the forest flank where we had secretly been hiding from the very start. But hold up, Uno reverse card time, because it turns out that the Empire had the exact same idea. Before we knew it, hundreds of Empire soldiers were rushing in behind us from the very same forest where we hid. Truly, we had been outsmarted. But as you might have figured out by now, Norskrens aren't great because they're smart. We're great because we're powerful. So with raw strength, anger of the gods, and the insane energy that only a purely fish-based diet can bring you, Wulfric and his men proceeded to completely stomp the Empire armies, both the flank and the main force, sending the Empire running over the hills and far, far away. But before we could celebrate our victory, we got some devastating news. Snugger the Terror had fallen in battle, and he was none other than Kor Franz himself who had dealt the death blow. Wulfric was outraged at the death of his best commander and quickly gave chase, catching the vile bastard just outside of Krudenwald. And so it came, the ultimate showdown. Kor Franz looked rather weak from his last battle, but he was still a man of honor, so the fight was to be had. We, on the other hand, didn't care much for honor. With the flanks taken care of by cavalry and the rear being attacked by our war dogs, Wulfric was left all alone to fight the front, hellbent on securing his vengeance on the man that slew his best commander and friend. But it turns out uh, he was too late. Mr. Franz had wrapped himself and his flying steed around a tree, having drunkenly crashed into it while attempting a swooping attack on our flanking cavalry. And with that, uh, Wulfric was satisfied. He had raided the riches of the Empire, pillaged their cities, avenged the death of his friend, and most of all, defeated their leader in glorious combat. So all there was left to do now was to go home. He returned back to the frozen hellscape where he came from. There, Wulfric spent the rest of his days knitting itchy mammoth wool sweaters and making an absolute fortune as he ended up finding massive amounts of oil just off the coast. Just like the real Vikings did. A fitting, wholesome, and very Norwegian end to our Norsken saga. Hello, and thanks for making it to the end of the video. My name is Koifish, and I hope you really enjoyed this as much as I did. It's my first time trying out Total War Warhammer 3, and I had an absolute blast making this video. So it would mean the world to me if you would leave a like and a comment, as it really helps out this video in the algorithm. Me and my editor is already working hard at making more of these videos, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Until next time, stay Norsken, my dudes. Yeet!